Caerleon is a pretty Welsh town. It was a Roman stronghold and the presumed site of Arthur's Round Table. The town is proud of its health and vigour and its eccentricities, but there's hardly a mention of the major employer, St Caddock's Mental Hospital up the road. While the local website is bursting with images and facts, a hundred-year-old asylum remains invisible. Could local historians explain its absence? I've just looked through and I must admit there's no mention of the hospital, which I do find a little odd. This one, this book, devotes a paragraph to the hospital, um, which isn't very much. Which paragraph is Page it? Page 116. This book was published in 1970 and times were quite different then. What do you think? She takes the, the factual stand on this, but it doesn't say a great deal about how the hospital worked. I am a little surprised now on reflection that I haven't done any more about the hospital. This lack of visibility concerns me. As a filmmaker, I'm usually behind the camera and not in front of it, but I have two very personal stories to tell. This county mental hospital was built exactly 100 years ago. Many came here, many died here. My grandmother was one. Back in the early 60s, when she was living with us in nearby Newport, she was sectioned and brought here, and I came and visited her once a week. I remember as a child, my grandmother said very often, I don't want to end in the workhouse. For my grandmother's generation, the very idea of the workhouse or poorhouse was horrifying and there was a large one right opposite her house. Many workhouses were eventually turned into mental hospitals or asylums, and so, ironically, she did end her days in one. I'm not sure if I can remember very much about those years, for when I was 17, I tried to kill myself, and eventually I came here for the outpatient treatment. Over the years, they gave me ever stronger drugs, and eventually ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. One drug, Drazine phenooxapropazine, very nearly killed me. I kept falling down unconscious. My GP said I should expect such things. I thought I was going to die, and when I read some patients had already died from it, I threw them all away. ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, was recommended. As I was underage, I couldn't choose it and so my father, who trusted those in white coats, gave his permission. They were unconscious. They'd, uh, they'd have a grand mal fit, and then, theoretically, that it worked. Some people are more depressed, that it, by inclined, to by chemical malfunction, so they can snap it back in, and it does work. But you've had to physically hold people in the... Uh, oh, no, no, because they were unconscious. They, they, they were unaware. But they didn't need restraining physically? I, I no, don't know. no, oh, okay. not really, no. It's got its uses, definitely. Endogenous, reactive, manic depressive, purple depression. You know where you are there a bit, don't you? It gives you a clue. They shouldn't, shouldn't have closed it down. That was just to save money again, I suppose. <laughs> My grandmother deteriorated as soon as she came here. I gathered sometimes she was put in the padded cell. Years later, I'm still trying to piece together those lost three or four years. My memory is vague, a sort of invisibility to myself. Why is this looming hulk of a place invisible to the outside world? Maybe there's a self-denial in all of us. I don't think any of us wants to go beyond a certain threshold of eccentricity. The Buddha said, apparently, all human beings are a bit mad. He meant, I think, we mostly create our problems, and we do this over and over. This is Olive Williams, nay James, 
who died here in 1966, aged 84. I don't remember whether she was buried or cremated. Because you've got a lot of green in the middle, haven't you? That's, the, that's why you have the movement. Because there's, there's a lot of this empty stuff in the middle. Do you think? Or you don't mind that? <laughs>